Good evening, if you don't know us, we are the Real Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs> and tonight we're gonna spill some tea. I think that's what they say. Oh, it feels so good to be back down to the South! Yes! I love the South, I want to put the South in my mouth. Everything's better down here. Football's better, drinking, country music, incest. They've got it all! Don't knock incest, Matthew. Everybody's got a hot cousin or an aunt that's really into yoga. You only live once, kid. You only live once. <laughs> He's For choosing mid- not to speak, it looks like. <laughs> Thought better of it. For How's mid-parent. everybody doing tonight? You're so far away, I can't reach you. I see a lot of people uh, have costumes on. Who's got costumes? Stand up if you're dressed up, huh? Let's see some costumes, yeah! Yeah! Everybody else is uh, dressed as a shell of the person that they were before the pandemic, like us. That's fun. Uh, this pandemic is, uh, can really eat my nuts. I don't care for it. Don't get me started, though. Big, big shout out to the masquerade, though, for making sure everyone took horse dewormer before coming in tonight. That was nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, masquerade. Matthew approves of that joke. The human race is doomed. We shouldn't be laughing. Um, I am at the height of my pandemic anger these days. Walking around with a mask in 104 degree weather does something to a man. (laughs) It changes you. It really does. Just want to return to my normal life of avoiding people and places on my own terms. Is that so much to ask? Anyways, get vaccinated if you can. Please be safe out there. And don't get mad at me and throw Bibles I'm just because I'm pro science. <laughs> <laughs> you, you lawless rubes. <laughs> Let me ask you a question who here lives in Atlanta? Because I know a lot of people travel to the con. Good amount of people. It's uh, a lot of people. Let me ask you I've been to Atlanta a lot for work, and every time I come here, I enjoy it. It's a very fine city. I always enjoy where I eat, where I drink. But then I'm at the hotel and I'll Google like things to do in Atlanta and it always comes up, that page does not exist. Uh, When I go, what do people do? Do you just go to the Coca-Cola plant and take a tour every day? I don't understand. (laughs) What's so funny is no one is actually born in Atlanta. I looked this up before the show. Half a million people in Atlanta and only seven were born here. Did you know that? Seven! 499,993 people chose to move here. What do you like, wake up one day, you're like, well, I really like Michigan, but I want to go someplace where my ass can be soaking wet 24 hours a day. <laughs> I, asked go to my, uh, I asked my uh, Lyft driver from the airport why she moved to Atlanta, because she was in New York, and she was like, because the air ticket was $59. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... Well, that makes sense. She was like, I looked at the whole map. I was like, what's the cheapest place I could go to get out of here? $59. So there you go, Atlanta. No, it's a great city. Good for you. Good for you and your city. I'm happy for you. <laughs> we like it so much, we're coming back tomorrow night. Yeah! yeah! Two shots. Wait, is this our first ever two in a row? First ever two in a row. First ever two in a row, Atlanta. Tickets still available. It's packing in here Friday night and a, my birthday at midnight tomorrow. We're going to have a party. It's the man's birthday at midnight tomorrow. I'm going to get sloppy and arrested. Yeah, how are we going to celebrate? With you falling asleep in a chair? <laughs> That's rude. How do you, uh, and Troy, I have a question for you. How do you combine both your love, your true love of celebrating your own birthday and having everyone around you celebrate with you and also being so sad that you're so old. I look good for almost 43, Joe. That's the difference. Keep telling yourself that. I used to, and then I had kids. (laughs) Folks, I want to introduce you uh, to four men who I am proud to call when I need something inconsequential done. First up, uh, he is the Dominique Wilkins of playwriting. (laughs) That's what they call him around here because he is as good at writing plays as former small forward for the Atlanta Hawks, Dominique Wilkins is 
at writing plays. <laughs> Matthew Capitacasa! <laughs> Let him hear it, he has tiny ears. They can't, they can't hear as well. I didn't understand that joke, so it just rolled right <laughs> off my back. <laughs> Means you're flashy and selfish. <laughs> well, now I'm upset. <laughs> I see you dressed for the Atlanta heat with your woolen dinner jacket. <laughs> <laughs> the nice thing about being a sweaty, disgusting mess 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, is it doesn't really matter how you dress or what climate you're in. You're always a little gross. It's true. Well, I'm glad, you, I'm glad you're here. Uh, next up is a man who is as tall as a professional basketball player, but they lo- let him play for fear that he would eat the ball. <laughs> Give it up for Grant Berger, folks. <laughs> Grant, I bet if I threw you a basketball, you'd peel it like an orange right now. I was begged by the coaches in middle school to play basketball all the time. They would corner me at the lunchroom and say, Berger, if you just, just stand underneath the basket, just do it, man, just do it. And I would always say no because I cried at my first basketball camp. because you I didn't cried know at do. your first basketball camp? Yeah, they tossed me the ball at a layup line and I like <laughs> tripped and fell and just cried in the corner. Did your mustache break the fall? It did, it did. It's back again for the first time in 30 plus years. <laughs> Thank you. It's a pro mustache crowd tonight. I gotta say, it's tearing my family apart. My father is cheering it on. My mother is just reminded of the terrible divorce she had from my father who has a mustache every time she sees it, so she wants it off. But Skid's father is now involved in the family feud. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Marr is now commenting on all of my posts and says, looking good, Guido, on every (laughs) one. And I'm he just loves like, Grant. He loves oh. Grant and, and the Italian people. Yes. <laughs> so. Grant asked me in the hotel room last night, he said, if I repeat Mr. Marr's joke, will people think that's offensive? And I said, I mean, as, speaking as, a, as an Italian, I'm only offended by the implication that we can't grow mustaches. <laughs> <laughs> I, <sighs> Folks, He's the only member of the Glass Cannon Network who also was a member of the Goody Mob, Outcast, and TLC. <laughs> Give it up for Atlanta's own Skid Mob! <laughs> Atlanta's own. <laughs> Atlanta's native son returns. Right. How are you, Skid? Once again, people, do not go chasing waterfalls. I've said it a hundred times, and you don't listen. Uh, are you having a nice uh, Atlanta visit? I didn't see you until today. Yeah, I actually am. Uh, Samantha's here with me, and uh, we, we're, uh, we're in an Airbnb downtown, and I... My wife? What? No, not your wife. Oh, my girlfriend. God. It's very, it gets very confusing. I was wondering why she didn't text me back. Yeah. She said, in the Airbnb, cozy it up to you. <laughs> it's good that we clarify occasionally, though. <laughs> but uh, no, I actually went, I, I went out to get some lunch, and I realized that we're actually like blocks away from MLK Jr.'s birthplace. So um, I, walked, I walked down towards it, and uh, I, I, I checked out the memorial and, and the gift shop. And uh, I actually, I started to cry. I was like, I, start, I actually started crying on Auburn Boulevard. Um, and I was holding it together okay until I got to the statue of Gandhi. And I started, and then there's another part, like there's a fountain, and there's like, it lays out like the six principles of nonviolent resistance. And one of the principles is, lays out that evildoers are victims of evil too. And that's one of the things that we do in these RPGs is like we treat evil as a tangible thing. And so that spoke to me. It's just like these evildoers are infected by this evil. They're not the true enemy, the evil is. And, uh, and that combined with seeing Gandhi's statue like that, I'm gonna cry again. I was like, I <laughs> got really like moved by it. Wow. So I was like, 
It was, uh, yeah, it was a really, really lovely thing. And I, I'm sure probably everyone here has been there, but it's like right downtown and it's, it's amazing. Um, I was, uh, it was nice. It was one, I'm, I've been here a couple times. I've never seen it, so I'm glad I checked that out. Wow. You're a sensitive guy, Skid. Nothing wrong with that. I'm sorry to bring it down. No, I no. <laughs> like... I'll be sure to ruin that moment with this next introduction okay. because <laughs> lastly is a man who is to Atlanta this is what the bomb in Centennial Park was to Atlanta during the Summer Olympics. <laughs> Joe O'Brien, everybody! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I could see all of you. Thank you. That was amazing on the lights. That was really mean. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew it was coming right after he gave that, like, heartfelt <laughs> I know. Skid. <laughs> I love Skid. He's a very close friend of mine. But he makes me look bad all the time. In so many ways. Because then, you know, Troy's going to kick it over to me and it's going to be like, what did you do today, Joe? And I'm going to be like, I went to Top Golf. <laughs> <laughs> you went to Top Golf and well, I, I hit... beat you. <laughs> That's true. Well, once. But I, I hit a 240-yard drive, so. That's incredible. I don't know if that helps. That's bested only by MLQ Jr.'s achievements. <laughs> I bet he never hit a drive 240 yards. <laughs> <laughs> we all have our strengths. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> <sighs> this is going to be fun tonight. I am, uh, I am hungover, so I'm going to have a beer. <laughs> <laughs> has, that, has nothing changed since I saw you on the street at like 11 a.m.? Oh, yeah, I did see you on the street, and we had to stop so I could vomit in the bushes. <laughs> We were walking down the street at one point this morning to breakfast, and Troy literally went, am I limping? Why am I limping? <laughs> and you said, it did, not, did you not get enough water to that leg? <laughs> That's in rough shape. I got here too early, was the thing. And I can't say no to six Bloody Marys on the plane. It's impossible. <laughs> How do you say no when they're like, would you like another Bloody Mary store? I'm like, yes. I'll make it a double. Would you like another? Yes. <laughs> uh, but no, now I feel great because we're here with the Nash. And we have got a humdinger tonight. Oh, man. This, this might not even be fun. This might just be, this might just be bad. <laughs> I'm going to have fun. You're going to have fun. They're going to be miserable. Uh... Yeah, I would, like to sh I would like to share with the crowd, if I'm sorry, a little bit of correspondence you sent us four days ago. May sure. I? The, the subject line is Strange Aeons Atlanta, and this is the email in its entirety. <laughs> Make backup characters love Troy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was in the middle of my prep, and I was like, oh, shit. They're good. Most of them are going to die from this encounter. Uh, but man, we'll see. I say that a lot, and sometimes it doesn't happen. I love these characters. I don't want them to die. How much of it is showmanship, and how much of it is actually, like, this is real? It's real. It's real bad. Is it real bad? Yeah. People who know Stray Jones, they, they, you guys are... You don't have a cleric, and it's a ghost. Grant, let's take it to the recap. Take it the recap! You just gotta jump right in. I'm not sure what's happening. <laughs> this is your worst recap yet, Chris. I know. Here it comes. What, is Joe making your recaps? <laughs> Take it to the... Uh, oh, okay, oh. Just, uh, just give me uh, 10 minutes. Uh, <laughs> Coca-Cola, huh? That's crazy. Here we go. Ah. Do we have sound, Kenny? Oh. Did we lose sound, Kenny? Yeah! I'm gonna play it one more time with sound. We're nothing if we're not pros. 
polished <laughs> like a pair of shoes. We are, man. It we'll is get, really we'll a live tomorrow. show, isn't it? It's is very live. Folks, let's talk about this recap. Lot to recap here, but I'm going to keep it tight. <laughs> right. Do you mind if I go to the bathroom for yeah, 15 minutes? <laughs> How dare you? so damn long. There's important information here. I am going to keep it tight because thus far, this has been, I think, our tightest run through an Adventure Path book since we started the company. Yeah, I think so too. We're moving. We're cooking. Yeah, book two of Strange Aeons is flying by. And although one or two characters are going to permanently die tonight, you guys have been doing really well. Really well. You escaped the asylum. Hot, not exactly hot on the trail, but maybe lukewarm on the trail of the man who had you committed in the first place. A man who you used to work for in some capacity. And a man who may know what happened to your memories. Count Hazerton Lowell's the fourth, a mysterious would-be scholar and de facto leader of Versex County and the Principality of Ustalov. You come to this city of Thrushmore where the Count resides and find a, a weird little town full of its own problems. The Count's gone, the Magistrate's gone, several townspeople are missing, and there's some sort of strange cult activity going on as well. You speak with a woman named Cecadia Rents at the Sleepless Detective Agency, and she tells you that she believes that the Count was stealing money from the town to fund some project he was working on. A royal accuser, working for the Crown, came to Thrushmore to investigate, thinking that perhaps this missing magistrate had something to do with the Count's absence. She went to Fort Halecourse to speak with the constable, to see what she knew, and to look through the books and records to try and figure out what's going on. She went to the fort and never returned. You knew this. I know, I was at reacting for emphasis. I was, was a good reaction. with the story. It looked genuine. Thank you. So now, the four of you have stumbled into this citywide mystery which you have a vested interest in, so you go to Fort Hale Course. You're met by the constable who, behind closed doors, tells you she's done everything she can, but the garrison is unmanned since the town can no longer afford to pay the mercenary guard, and she's under strict orders to not allow anyone in. So leave me alone, she basically says. You don't care for her tone. So you break in where you're attacked by what appears to be these missing mercenaries, soldiers who have been turned into juju zombies. Did you do zombies? You keep exploring and run afoul of these horrible amphibian scum who you now know snuck into the fort through the sewer system, the town's aqueduct system. Who sent them? Was it all part of some grand plan to take over the fort from within? Or did they just show up looking for a place to jam? <laughs> In your search of the fort, you find out that the Count's parents seem to have died mysteriously. The father of a sudden illness and the mother soon thereafter of perhaps the same illness. But you also find records of a man named Dr. Climes Pret, who was charged with treason for poisoning Lyle's father, Count Lyle's III, and sentenced to die, rot in his cell, right here in Fort Hale Course. No. Yes. How? I can't tell you. Last session, last sesh, after dealing with more scum who were looking for food now that the human meat has run out, you almost directly walk into a creature known as an id ooze who grabs Aldo in a constricting death grip that almost ends his life, were it not for the brave and pious Sir Julie Andrews. Also, House, also Halster, who kept healing him constantly. What? Also Halster, who heals him a lot. That's true. Halster did stuff too. I. <laughs> you did nothing. I did a point of damage. You find. <laughs> Let the record show. You then find some cells, prisons covered in blood, two bodies that seem to have been ritualistically murdered, killed, flayed, and one survivor, a young man named Sean, whose sister Holisa approached you in town, begging you to find him. You've found him. Sean, like his sister, hopes to one day be a great knight. 
and Sir Julie, upon meeting the boy, agrees to take him on as her squire, and now it's canon, and I hate that that came out in improv. I didn't, e- I didn't even prompt you on that. You volunteered You did it. it, man. I don't think Sean's going to make it out of Atlanta. That's all <laughs> I'm going to say. <laughs> I hate running NPCs. Sean tells you what he knows. Because he speaks fluent Aboleth. <laughs> he tells you that the scum may be working with this cult in town, a cult that you know is dedicated to Hastur, the king in yellow, and that these cultists are kidnapping people and sacrificing them to use their blood to power gateways to another world through the use of these star stilets in town. So you take all that information in, you walk into the next room, a room like it looks like it's been untouched for a long time. There's dust everywhere, and all of your eyes are drawn towards a portion of the room that looks to be plastered up. Magic radiating behind it. As Sir Julie uses the pommel of her sword to break open the wall, a ghostly apparition emerges, grasping towards Sir Julie, speaking of tasting someone's wife named Namira, and loving her more than her husband ever could. Gentlemen, this is gonna be a fucking doozy. <laughs> Can I? Roll for initiative. Roll, 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 Oh, baby. Now. What'd you do? <laughs> I rolled a natural 20. We were celebrating. Oh! Oh. You'll need that. Critical threat. Since critical threat. Oh, critical. Sorry. <laughs> You'll need that high initiative since you failed the perception check and will not act in the surprise round. <gasps> However, I did not allow uh, Aldo, Halster, and Atticus to roll a perception. So why don't you give me a perception to see if you caught this where Sir Julie did not. Oh, man. Ooh. 20. 20, pretty good. Halster? 15. Not as good. Aldo? 25 for Aldo Kizamiya! DC, 39. <laughs> uh... It has a plus 20 to stealth, and I rolled a natty 19. <laughs> I'm happy for you, Troy. All right, tell me your initiative. This could be the last time this character ever tells me their initiative. Then you could just go and visit the Coca-Cola factory if you could <laughs> die early in the show. Halster, what'd you get? 12. 12 for initiative. Atticus. Uh, 13. Wow. I thought I rolled poorly, but no, uh, it was terrible. And I really whatever. It's dumb well, this, to say you wanted a high initiative. This is incredibly this bad. This time I really wanted it. Aldo, uh, seventeen for Aldo. Good, Sir Julie. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. All right, we on the map here. <laughs> you see this thing come out at you, just. Oh. I think I said he had like swirling s- tattoos of an eldritch symbols all over his body. And he just, half of his body is out the, uh, coming out of the wall, the other half is still in the wall. And he, in a surprise round, goes to put his hand right through Sir Julie's chest. You know what, let's use neon green. Uh, where are you, buddy? It begins. If we're gonna kill, let's use a killer die. This is going to be a uh, touch attack. This is going to be against your flat-footed touch AC. It's going to be a guaranteed hit. For a minute there, I was like, flat-footed? All right, there's a chance. Touch attack. Yeah, I mean, God, this is so, so bad. If I crit, you just, you're done. Here we go. Jeepers. Grant, I see you looking over here. He's, he's looking. <laughs> bad roll. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Ten against touch. Ten? My flat footed touch AC is eleven. Oh! Yeah! <laughs> wow. Yes! 
Oh, amazing. Amazing! Oh, that's so cute. I had a 94% chance to hit you. <laughs> what would have happened? Well, you'll see. I'll get you this round. Uh, it is half out of the wall and half in, so it is going to get some sort of cover here. Uh, but now it is the top of round one, and it is Sir Julie's turn. Okay, uh, Sir Julie's, I, I don't, I'm just gonna guess that this thing is evil, so I'm gonna smite evil. That is a, uh, that's a wild assumption, Sir Julie. <laughs> Maybe he was saying, I want to talk to you. <laughs> Does he say that? No. He talked about eating somebody's wife. Right. Tasting. <laughs> I tasted your wife. Tasting. It's cooking. I don't have a wife. Sir Julie says. And then swings with the grace. And then swings. Okay. Okay. Smite on, evil. Power attack is and on. you crit right here. Come on. Furious yes. focus is on. Uh, that's going to that's gonna uh, be a 21 to hit. With the cover. That is a miss. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, Sir Julie will then take a five-foot step back. Coward! You are no knight! You guys having a nice conversation over there? I rolled a seven, but then when I went to reach for the die, I knocked it and hit a 15. That's when Joe saw it. He ah. got excited. And then Why don't I... we all just stop looking at each other's dice? <laughs> A good rule of thumb. Tuck my. I would have liked away. to take the 15. The 15 was better. Right, right, right. But the rules of the game state that I just you read what's on the die. When you take the five foot step back, Sean watches you and makes a note. <laughs> this is who I've pledged my my service to. He's this is studying your oh, every yeah. move. Mind you, Sean is wearing a silk blouse and armed with a dagger. <laughs> Stay back, Sean. Sean. Yes. Sean? Sean? Just Sean. like you, Sir Julie, I shall stay back. It is Aldo's turn. All right. Aldo. Aldo is, he sees this thing coming out of the walls. Oh, oh, I know what to do with this situation. And he pulls a bomb out of his bandolier. Okay. To throw. And I have a fun new audience interaction thing gimmick to do now. Gimmick! So. Love a gimmick. I have loaded up this bandolier with real life candy, fun size candy. <laughs> Whenever I Aldo... say I've loaded up this bandolier with real life bombs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that is a real grenades. gimmick. <laughs> live grenades. Anytime Aldo throws an alchemical bomb, I am going to throw some candy into the audience. Yeah! Now, unfortunately, here in Atlanta, the front row of the audience is about 400 feet back from the stage. <laughs> so I'm going to have to stand up and do this. <laughs> Someone's going to get pelted by some M&Ms. <laughs> <laughs> there was no arc on that. It was a line drive into someone's face. You just knocked that woman unconscious. Yeah, Skid, you looked like a middle reliever for the Mets. Is anyone a doctor? <laughs> I knew I should have loaded up with gobstoppers. <laughs> uh, that is a 20 against touch. That is a miss as well. Against touch? It has a ridiculously high touch AC. Oh. Okay. Life is going to get easier for you once it comes out of the wall. But now that I know you can't hit it, maybe I'll just hang out in the wall. It is this ghost's turn. Well, wait. The bomb, as some bombs do, explodes. Yes. On impact. So, uh, actually, it doesn't matter where it hits. It's going to take the splash damage impact. So, it is going, uh, being incorporeal, I assume it is going to take half. <laughs> M&M's uh, everywhere. Eight. Eight is the minimum fire, magical fire damage that it can take from this bomb. So we'll take half of that. It would take four points of damage. Four points of damage. And now it's just mad. And it comes out of the wall. Taste dead as a wife. And uh, I'm not going to miss again, Sir Julie. I'm not going to miss again. Gotcha. 
15 against yep. touch. Roll a fortitude save. I don't even know if I can roll this damage. It's so high. I might have to do it electronically. Oh, no, I have enough d6s. Natty 19. Yes, Whoa. Sir Julie. Yeah. Natty 19. All right. Uh, it's 7 d6 damage. You'll be taking half of it. And I rolled three sixes. So that's 18, 19, 20, 24, 29. You're going to take 14 points Ooh. of damage. Jeez, man. Jeez. That could have been 29. I'm going to kill Atticus. And what, and what would have done to Sean? All right. Um, seeing as... Oh, shit, stick. I don't want to do that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to stay right there for now. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. It is... Do you want, yeah, Atticus's turn. You're not going to do anything useful. Come on. I, At, do, I don't want to pile on, but useful would be my preference as well. <laughs> Atticus is... You hear Halster, you hear Atticus's voice behind you, and he's just like, buy me a little time, Halster. I just need a moment. And he's going to come out of the room, leave, go past Aldo, uh, and get back out in the hallway, and uh, prepare to run away immediately. <laughs> buy me a little time, Halster. Uh, no, he's actually gonna, he's gonna run back there, and he is going to uh, begin a sort of dark incantation uh, he starts moving his hands around in this sort of wispy purple cloud starts forming in front of him. And that's all you see right now. Okay. Okay, very... I wouldn't call it useful, but uh, it was something. Let's finish out the round here with Halster Price. We learned four sessions ago of the official interrogation of Hasterton about the death of his mother, Namira, who was mentioned as being cased by this very same spirit. We also learned in that same session about a memo for a trial of high treason against Dr. Kimes Pret for poisoning Hasterton's father. I think he was framed, I think he was set up for this, and I think this ghost is Dr. Kimes Pret. So Has Halster is going to say into the air, we know you're innocent, Dr. Pret. We're here to make Hasterton pay for his crimes. Just stand down, damn it! Awesome. Because oh. that's cat. exactly who Bottle it is. Bottle Cat, by the way. Bottle Cat. Bottle Cat. Bottle Cat. Bottle Cat. Bottle Cat. There you go. There you go. Oh, come on! Oh, you mean. get off on being withholding, you awful Lucille Bluth <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Give me a diplomacy check. Okay, okay. God, Here we go. I have I, two charisma damage from earlier in this dungeon, so. Come on. Six. You are. Can I throw in a bottle cap? What? This is a Topo Chico bottle cap you gave me pre pandemic. It is sad in my dice bag, my travel dice bag, for all that time. I don't drink well, Topo Chico. Wait, I love Topo Chico as much as anybody. But I think this might be Troy just, the showmanship of Troy, such as it is. Him like pretending that there's any chance of us getting through to this apparition. I think this could just be like, He's going to make a big play out of this. Like, oh, no, he rolled so poorly. And there's no chance we're going to do it. So don't waste that battle, bottle cap, I say. I'm with Skid on this because the other thing is just purely mechanically, even if it could happen, it's like DC 35 or right. some shit. He'll never hit him. Look at him. Look at Grant. Nobody likes Halster. <laughs> Nobody's going to listen to Halster. <laughs> Look at that mustache. No matter how he no, rolls. Nobody's going to listen to this, man. You can't trust a man with that mustache. <laughs> The DC went up by 10 just because of the stash. It's <laughs> in the rules in the GM screen in parentheses. With mustache, plus With 10 DC. It says it right in the book. Plus 10 to mustache. Yeah. I'll hang uh, on to my cap for now. You guys are such cap blocks. <laughs> yeah, the ghost just doesn't even register you. Um, 
you, at the mention of Wowls, he kind of looks over in your direction. Wowls killed me. Oh. Can I do any type of knowledge check on it to ascertain what type of creature we're fighting? Uh, yeah, give me a knowledge religion. Uh, that is going to be a 15. 15? It's a ghost. Okay. A g- 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 ghost! Then Hauser g- g- is g- g- going ghost. to take a five foot step backwards and channel positive energy to harm undead. Ooh! Ooh. I like it! Wow. Okay. I will roll, uh, I'll roll to save on that. Was that a will save? Yep. A Get a little save. bonus. I'll let you know if you pass or not. All right, here we go. Uh, ooh, not a great roll, but he does have channel resistance, so that is going to be a 13. He passes because of my charisma damage. Uh. Uh, I'm going to use a blessing as well to empower that with pow- the powerful uh, healer ability, which also works against channels against undead. Okay. Uh, so that will be nine points of damage halved. Four nine points. halved, four points of damage. Okay. Chipping away. At four his, bros. That is 300 hit points. That's the end of round one. Good round one, everybody. Solid round one. All still alive. Uh, you told Sean to stay back, right? Yes. Okay. He's just taking notes, looking at Atticus. He kind of writes something and doesn't let you see what he's writing. It is Sir Julie's turn. Sir Julie, you are a knight. You have seen horrible things in the world wound. This is a ghost covered in eldritch symbols. Perhaps it is Dr. Klein's Pret. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this again. Swing with the great sword, power attack, furious focus, smited evil. All right. It's no longer Come in the on, wall. Matthew. Natural 20. Oh, Natural yeah. 20! Yes! 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 Oh. Confirm it, dude. Come on! To confirm. Natural 2. Oh! Oh, you hate to see it. You hate 16. It. Is it 16 total unconfirmed crit. <laughs> That's wait, a good one for that. Wait, wait, wait. Bottle okay. cap. Here we go. Once per day, I can re-roll a confirmation roll because of my shitty archetype. What are you thinking of? No, there's no, there's no bonus to hit from the smite evil. Okay. Just checking. So, All right. can I have exploding dice? I'll give you exploding dice. You're going to need it. I don't explode. Oh, I good. do deal 27 points of magical damage. Woo, baby! So, uh, 13 points of damage? Yes. Would have been nice if you crit. It would have been really nice if I crit. You guys are doing a lot in, better than I thought you would. In hindsight, I should have turned in my bottle cap. Uh, I am going to take a five-foot step back yes. and lay so That's where you want to use a bottle cap, yes. not on a diplomacy check that I'm never going to let pass. On a critical confirmation <laughs> roll. Checks out. I rolled much better on my uh, lay on hands. Just, just so you know. If you'd like, I'll let you re- retroactively use the bottle cap to confirm your crit. What? Yeah, I'll let you do it. It's up to you. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. Confirm that crit, Matthew. Yeah. Can Julie I roll? Knows no fear. Can I roll a knowledge religion first? Sure. Can I roll a knowledge dirt bag? <laughs> 18 knowledge religion. Is there anything particularly you'd like to know? Is it immune to critical hits? It is. <laughs> <laughs> Almost gotcha. Almost got him. I'll get that Topo Chico if it's the last thing I do. Oh. You know what? Nah. <laughs> oh, that would have been amazing because I would have taken it away and I would have laughed and laughed and laughed. <laughs> you have felt sick all day and that would have turned it all around. Oh, I already like, My feel headache's good. gone. <laughs> I feel great. I see the light. Uh, Aldo, 
Aldo, you don't have as tricky of a shot now. Everyone is backed up. It's no longer getting that cover bonus from the wall. A little bit easier of a target. How many fun size candies did you bring with you? I brought I've, every po pocket of this genuine leather bandolier is filled with fun size candies. <laughs> So Aldo is, uh, yeah, he's, like he sees this apparition and he's definitely, he's just, oh, oh, it's a ghost, is it? Well, see you like the taste of alchemical fire. And throws another one. <laughs> ah, yes. You, you see that wrist action he put on I that? I did, I did. The English form. English on that. Were those Skittles? Uh, that is another 20 against Touch AC. That one is gonna hit. Yeah, yes. baby! And okay. that is 15 points of magical fire damage. Okay. Seven more down. Doing pretty well, but now it's its turn. Uh, doesn't really care for the damage that Aldo has been laying out, but I did pick on him in Boston. So, I think I'm going to take a five-foot step here and attack Halster. No. Only because you looked at my dice. Don't look at this. Jump. Here we go. Touch AC. Ooh. Not great. 11. Exactly my touch AC. Uh. Shit rolls! But he's that good. I believe you. You he rolled eleven. <laughs> here's here's the thing. I need that fortitude save, buddy. Come on, Halster. Come on, dude. Eleven. Oh. 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 Seven d six oh. damage. Oh man, I didn't know I could roll that many sixes. Oh god. By the way, shout out to Amanda for these uh, these nameplates that yeah. we are. Yeah. Verdukai. Now you know who we are. Uh, that's gonna be 25 points of damage. Okay. Oh. 25 points of damage. And then, let me see here. Yeah, no, you know what? This'll be fun. It is then going to, oh, it'll provoke from both of you numbskulls. You know what? Forget it. I'm just going to... Ah, fuck it, it. Let's have some fun. It, it, is, already, it already moved. It has mobility. All right. Why don't you give me your Topo Chico bottle cap for being so rude? <laughs> what? <laughs> mobility? Yeah. Doesn't mean... Oh, sp uh, spring attack. Ooh. So the mobility will give me the plus four against both of your AOOs. So go ahead and take your stupid AOOs against All my right. beautiful ghost. So you didn't take a five foot step, you just moved five feet. I moved, feet, yeah. And then you're gonna continue It's a flavor moving. five feet. Uh, that is a 31. Jeez. Oh! Yes, Sir Julie! Julie! Sir Julie. 18. Uh, all right, that one misses, but that one hits. I believe power attack is still on. I believe it is. Uh, that'll be 28 points of magical oh! damage. That was, uh... That was a real dumb move by me. Does Shom take a note of that? <laughs> it moves over here and goes straight through the wall to be next to Aldo and Atticus. Oh, oh shit. shit. Thereby making it impossible for Halster and Sir Julie to get to it. <laughs> Do you want to kill Shom that much? <laughs> <laughs> Shown will not see Friday night. You could, ju you could just have him like run off with his sister to go join the night training academy. Do you need to kill him? Shown will never know who wins the Bachelorette. Aww. It is Atticus's turn. Casting a spell next to a ghost. What do you want to do? Oh my God, this thing comes through the wall and Atticus is just like, <gasps> he's shocked by it, but he's trying to keep the concentration on this spell as he's completing the casting, this sort of dark purple wisps of cloud that are forming between his rat-like hands. Oh, they're just rat hands. Right. Uh, and it's... <laughs> 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 
and slowly the purple starts getting these lines of green and these lines of gold and then the gold expands and the green expands until there's no more purple and it just sort of like whoosh, this like wisp goes past uh, shone, and all the way through to the other end of the corridor and at the back of the room uh, near the doorway it materializes into this uh, golden like shaped wiry creature and he summons a lantern archon yeah! yes! in the corner of the room that just like sh- question since you started that spell on your last turn and you're finishing it right now, do you think it should provoke from the ghost that is right next to you? No, I don't think so because it just, it completes at the start of my turn. It's a full round casting. Right, but so weren't you still casting? What do you guys think? Yes? What? I'm hearing a lot of yeses. <laughs> it's, all that was all flavor, man. All right. Let me find a fun token for this. Please don't be mean to my lantern, Arkham. <laughs> it's, it's good at heart. Uh, he's inspired by Sir Julie's goodness, and uh, he's trying to make a connection with at least something good from beyond our realm. So this creature uh, materializes and immediately attacks the ghost through Aldo, so you will get uh, the benefits of cover with a ray of light. Yes. Uh, of there pure... is your lantern, Arkham. That is... <laughs> A ray of light. Oh, come on! <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> For God's sakes. She had just got back from Myrtle Beach. <laughs> <laughs> you pulled me right off the beach! Uh, all right, she, uh, <laughs> the lantern on God, uh, fires. <laughs> what is your bidding, my master? <laughs> And then smokes a marble thin. <laughs> <laughs> Fires a ray of light. Uh, Natural 20! Yeah! 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 <laughs> All right. Ray of light. Does that provoke? Or you cast offensively? It's, it's firing a ray of oh, light. Oh, it's firing the ray of light. Yeah, it's its turn. Through Aldo at it. Natural 20. Natural 20. Okay, don't worry about the confirm. Immune to crits. Oh, that's right. Fuck stick. But I will give you if exploding he roll, dice. If he rolls a natural 20 on the confirm, will you do something cool? Sure. No. All right, here we go. Uh, that is three points of damage. So one, one point of damage. One point of damage. <laughs> I like to stay consistent. May I return to the beach, master? He's gonna need that natural 20. And he's got a, she's got, I'm sorry, she's got a second ray uh, of light. Uh, that is a 19 against touch AC. 19 against touch, but it's through Aldo. So that's gonna be a miss. Okay, uh, and then Oh, this is juicy. Is this cell open? <laughs> yes. Yes, that cell is open. Stay back there, damn it. Stay small. Her name Don't is... attract attention to yourself. Her, her name is Tammy. <laughs> Tammy! Down! No, not now is not the time. <laughs> yes, my master. <laughs> is she trying to smoke her, smoke her Virginia Slim, or is she pr- trying to praise Log? Yeah, it's really... It does look like she's smoking something. Anyways, where she's like (laughs) sneezing. Uh, Is that cell door open? Did anybody remember? Did we just never open it? Uh, Yeah, that's the the cell door that Sean was in. So it stands open. Yes. He's like, ah, don't look under the bed. Okay. Then Atticus is going to take a five-foot step back, look across at this creature, and I'm going to do a knowledge check. Uh, knowledge, Relige. Uh, oh, damn it. Uh, it's a 14. 14, Relige. Uh, it's a ghost that's immune to crits. Yeah, it's a ghost. Um, oh, man. He says, I don't know who you are, but you will never know who I am. And his hands go in front of his face, and he disappears. And he casts invisibility on himself. 
Okay. It's a pretty good move, leaving Aldo there to die. It is Halster's turn. Perhaps Halster can yet again save Aldo's life. The only thing Halster can think to do is to turn to Sir Julie, the sword of justice in our party, and say, banish it, banish it from this realm, make sure it never comes back. And he reaches out and touches Sir Julie and casts Bull's strength on him. Ooh. Juicy. Little bull strength on Sir Jules. This has been round two. It is now round three. Halster's five foot stepping as well. It is now round three. And it is Sir Julie's turn. Sir Julie, your back is against the wall, but you feel like you have the strength of a bull. And, uh, and Sir Julie will go out following this creature and will provoke to step into the square that Atticus has just vacated. Wow. Bad ass. All right. Here comes the natural 20. Here comes the natural 20. Natural one. Yes! Yes! Oh, yes, 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 yes! I am done getting excited about my monsters. This is bullshit! Uh, I'm so glad I didn't do any of that work on the backup character that you asked. All right, so that's melee. You know, if it's a weapon, we'll, we'll adapt it, but it's a... It's a Melee touch, basically. Got something good? I know you were working on these in the hotel today. Yeah, I was trying to see if there was anybody uh, from around here. Any Atlanta-based melee crits? No, I don't have any. Uh, but I've got... Uh, how about Melbourne, Florida? Shaw Shaw? Is Shaw Shaw from Melbourne, Florida here? All right, Shaw Shaw? Shaw? Melbourne, Florida. Uh, <laughs> the kid. This is Hi. called. This is called not the bees. <laughs> not the bees. <laughs> not the bees. <laughs> you, you feel a tickling sensation on your scalp that quickly turns into a terrible stinging sensation. There is a ghostly wasp in your ghostly hair. Oh. You must drop your weapon. Oh, no weapon. Uh, and take the panicked condition for one round. Whoa! As you run around in panic trying to swat it away, no save. Wow! That could be really big. Yeah. It could be big, because it's gonna provoke attacks of opportunity from all of us. <laughs> Including... Shone. Yeah. Shone. You told Shone to stay out of this. He's in it now. His metal would be tested yet. I feel like Matthew just trying to look at a way that I could negate that crit. Fumble, whatever. Uh, crap! All right, so my ghost is scared. I know. Stupid! And I believe I now get to take my attack. You may. Natural one, natural one, natural one, natural one. Uh, okay, uh, 24 to hit. That's a hit. Yes. <laughs> that bull strike is amazing! Max damage, Whoa. 38, 38 points of damage. Whoa. Yeah! <laughs> Don't even have to worry about panic. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Here comes the bull. That was amazing. <laughs> the poor staff is like, people pay to see this? <laughs> <laughs> That's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah, they, I think, yeah, they were definitely like, that is, those are the two least athletic people we've ever seen run across this stage. I, you, you can say that about me, but you bite your tongue about Grant. Grant is having an athletic yeah. renaissance. Yeah, he is. <laughs> I want you to do that. Cycling is not running. I would like you to do that every time uh, Bull Strength is cast. Oh, there goes my mic. Hey, everybody, wait. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about what you want to do here. The enemy 
has been neutralized. It just, ah! And it kind of dematerializes and disappears. Uh, oh man. This Can is... we check out his house? I don't think it's his house, but yes, you may go over and continue <laughs> banging that wall. Wow, that was a whole sort of, I went kitchen sink on that and it didn't matter. Yeah. Um, what do you say to Tammy just as she disappears? Yeah, he walks over invisible to Tammy and he's like, Tammy, I know you can see me. <laughs> She's ascending towards the camera as you're talking to her. You did wonderful. I'll call again. Thank and you. Uh, sends her back to the beach. And she just disappears. <laughs> and all that's left is the smell of her menthols. How long does bull strength last? Uh, rounds, just rounds. It's Actually. minutes. It's Why, minutes. do you want to barrel oh, through no, the wall? Oh no, it's five minutes. Yeah, five and so minutes. is oh. invisibility, so let's push. Well, I, we need to figure out what, we need to bear, open up the wall. Yeah. All right, I, I you, bang down the wall. Is anyone else hurt, by the way? A tiny, tiny bit. I'm gonna channel, because I need a channel for myself. Oh, I'm hurt as well, that'd be lovely. Uh, Leave Atticus out of the range. Uh, nine points of healing. Oh, wonderful. Keep right. pushing, Sir Julie. I can't be seen. Sir and Julie, I you're very strong. You're imbued with bull strength. And uh, after some work, you're able to smash down the wall. It's really interesting what you see behind it. Um, as the plastered part comes down, you see that from floor to ceiling are bales of hay covering the corridor. He's rich. You and you can see a... <laughs> He's an affluent man. <laughs> Such staggering wealth. <laughs> He's been accumulating wealth in the afterlife. <laughs> you can see beyond the riches uh, a cell door uh, on the other side of the hay. Like a hillbilly pharaoh of old. <laughs> Hill hillbilly pharaoh. I'm hearing everything on a slight delay, <laughs> so everyone laughs, and I'm like, oh, that was funny. Oh, no, that was funny. <laughs> that was really funny. Um, so if you push away the hay, you get to a uh, locked cell door. Anyone, do we have a key? I can't remember. Did we find any keys? You did find a ring of keys. I use it to open the door. Um... Yeah, sure, it opens. And <laughs> who gives a shit? It's a fucking... <laughs> Am I... Are we going to get to a point where like, and you couldn't open the door, <laughs> end of adventure. Uh, there's a key under the mat, all right? Just... Right. <laughs> the key under the, the mat. a little fake rock. You open it. There's a key. You see a tiny little room and uh, sealed from the outside world, just like the pre previous room uh, for clearly many, many years, uh, the c cell smells like a tomb. At first glance, it looks just like the cells in the other room, maybe solitary confinement or something, but it also has the appearance of a torture chamber. A horrible place to be. You think of what Halster said during the battle, this Dr. Climes Pret, it said that he poisoned Laos. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Maybe he was just sleeping with Lao's wife. Laos found out killed him. He did say, Laos murdered me. Well, which Laos? The third? The fourth? You don't know. But either way, if it is Dr. Pratt, he was tortured in this room to death. And then they walled him into his torture chamber? Yes. And huddled in the middle of the floor next to a bench lies the body of a man. How old? Very old. 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 The desiccated corpse is dressed only in a ragged loincloth and has uh, started to undergo the process of natural mummification. Gross. 
The most recognizable features on the corpse are several large tattoos on the torso and the thighs that you can still see, mostly depicting these abstract, swirling monstrosities with too many eyes and too many mouths. Can, I, can we roll a check on the tattoos? Uh, sure. Which, what would you like? I don't know. What do you want to do? I got, I got planes and religion. Um, I would say planes. I don't know anything. What about Atticus? This is more your jam. Sir Julia yeah. is a known fool. I'll, I'll aid you, Atticus. I succeed. So, 23. Knowledge planes. He actually would be very interested in these things. By the way, you know what the material components of bull strength are? A few hairs or a pinch of dung from a bull. I mean, can we choose the hairs? Like, can you be like, my bull strength is, is it's the hair bull strength. No, Hal's already smelled like his own urine, so you really couldn't pick up on the bull turds he was carrying around in his I prefer pocket. the dung bull strength. It's like you just examine the bull's droppings and you're like, I'll just take a pinch. <laughs> They're uh, occult symbols connected to, you know, what's beyond the veil, beyond the dark tra- tapestry, the, the world beyond the stars. You know, was he a cultist? Was he just a scholar that was obsessed with this stuff and tattooed his body with it? Um, you don't know. It does seem rather evil, um, and he did try to kill you. And um, I was able to smite him, right? Yeah, you were definitely able to smite him. Uh, it, the ghost appears to be restless, and Halster, you would know that, like, there's a chance that if you don't uh, take care of this body, the ghost could return. It's we a horrible way that they left him. We must prepare a proper burial for this awful, awful man. There are many graveyards that will not accept his body tattooed it as, it, as it is. We must find a proper place. Yes, I agree. Now remember, you did detect magic in this room, so if you bring that up again and try and locate exactly where the magic is coming from, it appears to be coming from inside the corpse. Ugh. Ugh. Before well, we I- bury it with full uh, sacrity and honors, let's tear it open and pick through its bowels, see what magic might lie within. Absolutely. Atticus will lean over and he pulls out his masterwork silver dagger. Wait. What? I am a paragon of goodness. I shall leave the room. (laughs) (laughs) Sean takes notes. (laughs) Do you have good heal, Joe? Can I help you with a heal check to help guide your hand surgically through this? Yeah, give me a heal check to show him, like, how to do this correctly. I already did. 24. Okay, he says, right there. Yeah. Why shut up, house, house, just shut up. He just makes this his incision where he has identified the magical aura. He slices open and pulls back the desiccated flesh. Yeah, and like dust <laughs> comes out. Moths. Moths. <laughs> he was full of wool. His belly was full of wool. <laughs> A small little man is like, oh, thank you, God. <laughs> oh, it was hot in there. <laughs> and he gets out. What year is it? <laughs> what year is this? You see inside of this awful, like imagine, uh, have you ever cracked open a, a wasp's nest? Or yeah, seen yes. like the inside of a wasp nest? It has that sort of texture oh. as you oh. look inside. And as you crack it open and the dust comes up and the moths and the small man you see something oh, that it's makes, a fig. makes your eyes pop out of your head. It is a ion stone. Oh, there you go. Perhaps his most prized possession that he swallowed Swallow. oh. before he was tortured to death in here. Wow. Give me a spellcraft. Oh, you oh, you're going to love buddy. this. I'll you're going to love this. Oh. Uh, 31. Atticus pulls it out. 
blows this dust off of it. Yeah, his eyes just widen. He holds it up. What are you? (laughs) It is a scarlet and blue sphere ion stone, which is a plus two bonus to intelligence. Oh. Oh, baby! Oh, my God! The stone grants the wearer a plus two enhancement bonus to intelligence. It has one skill associated with it as a plus two headband of vast intelligence. Wow. It is the perfect toy for you. Aldo leans over James's shoulder and says, What is that, James, my love? (laughs) (laughs) The other intelligence-based character leans over and asks, What do you say to him? My love. It's a, it's a stone I found in the corpse. I'm drawn to it. I cannot <laughs> explain. Beautiful thing. Yes, it, it is. is, isn't it? It is. And he starts to slowly pull it down and away from you, looking back up over his shoulder. <laughs> Don't hide it from view. I wish to look at it some more. Maybe now is not the best time. No, no, no. Now is the perfect time. As his hands, his long, spindly hands, slowly close over his throat. (laughs) (laughs) He uh, he steps up, like, away from your hands. Like, startled. He steps away. He's like, why shouldn't I have it? Why shouldn't I keep it? Because it's my birthday, (laughs) James. And I want it. (laughs) It's it's mine. I found it. (laughs) You still need to get angry. (laughs) Nerds. (laughs) (laughs) The, uh... The little guy comes back in. He's like, did anybody find a small stone in there? I, uh, I left an no, iron. No, shut your mouth. Oh, right, fuck right, off. Right. Fuck off, you little bastard. Thanks for letting me out. Thief. <laughs> stole it. <laughs> he stole it from us. He stole it. Oh, birthday present. He's already getting ready to roll. I'm oh. ready to roll. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. You want to use Matthew's bottle cap? Yeah! <laughs> Come on, Atticus. You need this so bad to be effective. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh. I, rolled a, I rolled a seven. I rolled a six. Yeah! <laughs> I'm shaking up the neck! <laughs> Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. You would have had such a high intelligence. All of your DCs would have gone up. You'd be the envy of every rat in town. But you are cursed. (laughs) It's so unbelievably valuable. It's more (laughs) spells, higher DCs on illusions. Oh my god. Because those have been so helpful in the past. <laughs> kick, kick him while he's down. <laughs> but no, James, I think about it, I can exclude one more person from my bomb's effects. <laughs> you could save Shun. Yeah, exactly. He hands it over and falls into a puddle of tears. <laughs> <laughs> Did you add, you already added it to your character sheet? (laughs) No. (laughs) Troy, what is the knowledge associated with the stone? I don't know. Uh, I'll tell you after the show. Uh, It just, yeah, it it says it has one skill associated with it, so just pick one. Uh, Okay, let me, I'll pick one in, in the next five minutes. Okay, or by tomorrow night. Um, and that's all that you see in this room. 
have we, do, it seems like what I'm looking at on the map here, we've explored all of the downstairs. It appears so. Um, and even uh, Atticus swam through this very thin sewer duct um, where he met a hydra that was trapped there. Um, but the hydra informed you that it just led to the aqueduct system. Shall we go up, upstairs and do that other part, that other wing that we haven't hit yet? Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Let's um, let's go back to this old map. Remember this map? I really have no idea what you guys are going to do, but uh, let's put Shone here on this map. There he is. Little piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Where did Sean get the notebook, by the way? What notebook? Is he holding a notebook? Oh, the notebook that he's taking notes? Uh, he found it on one of the scum's bodies. <laughs> Does it have chord progressions for a new song? It, it might. <laughs> he ripped out those pages. You've All got right. some more rooms here on this first floor to look at, and then you've got two sets of staircases going up. Um, oh, actually, you've, you've got two staircases going up, one in this kitchen area, uh, one over uh, to the north here, and then you've got those uh, staircases that lead up the towers as well, uh, two of which you've uncovered. When you were standing outside, you saw five towers and a donjon atop the battlements. So what do you want to do? You want to clear out the first floor? If you remember, when you first came into the fort, waves of juju zombies were coming from uh, the western side of the fort. Uh, so you, 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 you have every reason to believe you were able to kill a lot of the enemies in those rooms. So if you want to just do a sweep... You could do a careful sweep and see if you run into anything. And then, there, of course, there are those angry dogs out in the courtyard. Let's Somebody do, a, do something. Let's do a careful sweep of the first floor. Yep. A careful sweep. A gentleman's sweep, if you will. All right. Uh, starting right there at that door. You open up that door, and it looks like a barracks. There's an arrow loop and another spiral staircase leading up to a guard tower and a door leading out to the courtyard, which you now know, and then another door leading further east. No magic, nothing of import. Sweep on. Keep going. You keep sweeping and swapping, bipping and bopping, and you open the next door. Shagung. Oh. No, no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Want to take this computer and fire it into the front row. Uh, some people, yeah, some people get a, yeah. a fun size get too excited. The, uh, this L-shaped room is mostly empty, uh, but holds a few, nat uh, a few neatly stacked piles of military-style camping gear. Uh, sitting against the walls. You also see a case of arrows sitting near uh, each of the arrow loops. And an extinguished hooded lantern sits on the floor near the arrow loop in the western wall. Let's look out that loop. Looking out the loop. Uh, there are two arrow loops that allow views outside. Uh, another spiral staircase in the northwest corner uh, allowing passage up, probably to another tower. You go over to the hooded lantern loop and you look through and you see in the distance atop a hill, a giant hedge surrounding what looks like several large buildings. And you think this must be the grounds of Iris Hill, yeah. Count Lau's residence. You had heard from somebody that he erected a hedge around the property seemingly overnight, some said. Seeing this lantern and the view of Iris Hill, you think that the inhabitants, the guards of Fort Hale, of course, probably use this line of sight to send signals 
with the lantern uh, if other methods of communication weren't available, like cell phones. Oh. Uh, there's some gear here. Um, you could collect the hidden lantern. You also find a box of 20 tinder twigs, but uh, nothing really uh, of interest besides that ominous view. And no magic. Of Iris Hill. No magic. What about in the door that Sir Julie's standing outside of? Is there magic beyond that door? Uh, uh no. <laughs> Question mark? Why don't you just tell? Uh, yeah, no, there's no magic. There's nothing there, Sir Julie. You pop that bad boy open and you see um, the southern barracks. Uh, bunk beds, wooden lockers, small chests, coal braziers and stools, and a rancid smell lingering in the air that you didn't smell in the other rooms. Sean. Yes, Sir Knight. Sniff out the source of that smell. All right. Every night begins with their nose. All right. He looks back again. Okay. He walks in, sniffing in the air proudly. Gives you a thumbs up. Walks around. He seems to catch a scent of where it's coming from. <laughs> and he starts to go down on the floor and look under one of the beds. And he's like, I found it, Sir Julie. It's what? milk. Oh, no. Spoiled milk. It looks like it curdled on top. What could it mean? What foul creature would spill milk and not clean it up? What creature indeed? <laughs> Must Did be you... a four-year-old human child. <laughs> They're monsters. <laughs> Did you see these terrors in the world wound? Yes. You hear of these Hungry horrors. for your children? <laughs> ah, yes. Battalions of them. <laughs> Screaming mad. The horror. They come out at you and they come out at night. <laughs> <laughs> they really are chaos demons. It's really... The, uh, uh, the beds are all carefully made. If you open up the chest, all the gear is properly stowed uh, in the chest like, like the room was ready for an inspection. So whatever they did with these mercenaries, like... People didn't leave in a hurry. Everything looks very neat. Got some more Shut spiral up. staircases, more towers. Now you're going to have to make some decisions. Holy shit, you guys have done a lot of this for it. That's... Look at that. Basement, clear it out. This area, clear it out. Clear! Yeah. Clear! Shall we go upstairs? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But let, which no, staircase? let me weigh in with my newly improved intelligence. I say it's a good move. And also, in addition, this uh, device, this uh, artifact, has gifted me with a uh, uh, new, complete knowledge of the uh, history of Galarian. I've, I've taken the history skill as a bonus so which is actually kind of cool because he's not from galarian right so it's like he puts this thing goes oh whoa i know kung fu i know kung fu <laughs> so he's very excited he's just like kind of running through the rolodex of galarian history and it's just like she's amazing what a what a what a creatively constructed fantasy themed world <laughs> There's so many adventure possibilities. Yeah. <laughs> Behind you, Atticus's face darkens. <laughs> He's just staring at it as it loops around <laughs> your head. <laughs> Thinking in his head, I will have it. <laughs> One day. I'll pull it off his corpse if I have to. <laughs> you want to go upstairs? Above got, the kitchen? Got a lot of options here. One, two, three, four, five towers, and then two 
staircases. I do think the library stairs may lead to the most lucrative parts of the building, whereas the stairs leading up from the kitchen might lead to something more mundane. But your call, Sir Julie. Do you hear that shade? Yeah. You hear and that? And he throws it. Make a choice. It's your call. <laughs> Let's go above the kitchen. Yeah. Ooh, busted. <laughs> Let's see what mundane nonsense lies at the top of these stairs. It's a win-win. Either we find something cool or we delay the cool thing to the end of the show. The end is fast approaching, my friend. Don't rest on your laurels. Go. Move quickly. All right, so what did you decide? I wasn't listening. Uh, We're going to go up at the kitchen. The kitchen. Oh, the kitchen. The kitchen, you say. All right. You, uh, how are you guys approaching it? It's a thin staircase. Who's going up first, second? I'll bring up the rear. Okay. I uh, shall take the lead if you allow it, Halster. I'll follow you, Sir Julie. I'll follow you into the depths of hell. Aldo, by all means, <laughs> go ahead. No, 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 no. You see, my newly improved intellect tells me that I should, in fact, be behind you lot because I'd be most effective that way. (laughs) Don't worry, my young rat friend. I have a suitable amount of pity for you. For you will never know the the heights of genius that I'm now capable of. But don't worry, I shall share any fruits that I'm able to pluck from the tree of inspiration. Yes, I may pluck a few things myself. <laughs> Let's go, Sir Julie. All right, so it's Sir Julie, followed by Halster, followed by Aldo, followed by Atticus. Oh, no, followed by Sean, then followed by Atticus. Sean. Sean. Let's rock. Okay. Here's what happens. You start climbing the steps. Roll a perception check, Sir Julie. I will do this. I will do this. Uh, I'm gonna use uh, my ability called Second Chance. Nope, not Second Chance. A different ability called Inspired. Okay. To re-roll and take the better result. <laughs> oh, there you go. It's fair. Okay, that is better. 23. 23. Okay. okay. Right. As you're climbing the steps, you hear a voice that sounds very familiar, but a little bit more sinister. It's like, like it's trying to cast a spell. You get to the top of the stairs and you see yet another scum holding a trident in one hand. And uh, let me move you to the new map here so I can do a close up of the creature that you are about oh. To, oh. to throw down with. Oh, shit. Roll for initiative. Whoa. Oh, baby. This I, is gonna be spicy. I can't help but notice that you left Atticus out. I assume it's uh, because he's useless. Uh, he's on there, it's just he's at the bottom of the stairs and I, when you tell me you wanna move, I'll put you on the map. See you right here, hello. Uh, what did everybody get? Let's start with Aldo, the, the new, clearly the most intelligent member of the group. Aldo, the newly crowned intellectual giant of the group, has rolled a 20 on his initiative. 20? Wow, okay. Atticus? 11. Who? Don't worry. That sounds like a typical dumb character's initiative. <laughs> uh, Halster. Eight. Ooh. I spoke too soon. Sir Julie. 17. Ooh. Not as good as Aldo or my character. However, Aldo, you see Sir Julie halt at the top of the steps, and you hear this sound as well, and you get to act first. Can I actually see what's going on in the room from where I am? You can't no, see the not. creature yet. Yeah, you'd have but to I come. But I see Sir Julie is like, okay, so... Bombs away, Aldo. Yeah, Aldo, with his 
genius, his new instinct for everything that's going on, uh, pushes past Halster and Sir Julie with his narrow frame into the room and says, I hope you like being caught on fire by explosive incendiary devices. Oh boy. Yes, oh, yeah. that hurt. Knock somebody's glasses off. Uh, all right, so you chuck a bomb at this dude. A bomb? A bomb? Uh, that is a 16 against touch AC. That is a hit. Beautiful. And that is 19 points of magical fire damage. Jeepers! And I think that might disrupt his concentration, don't you, Skin? <laughs> Shut up, Matthew. It is now the creature's turn. That was a flavor spell casting garbled sound. Oh. He will now actually cast oh. grease on the stairs. Oh. Nice. Wow. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> right on the old stairs. Let me just find my grease symbol. Here she is. No. Tammy, no. <laughs> there, it's, that's, that's grease from roll 20. Right there. <laughs> yeah. So, uh... Yeah, let's talk about Grease. I haven't cast this shit in a while. Uh, this Grease hasn't been on the network in forever. Um, any creature in the area when the spell is cast, which is everyone but Aldo, must make a successful reflex save or fall. A creature can walk within or through the area at half normal speed with a DC 10 acrobatics check. Failure means it can't move that round and must make a reflex save or fall. Failure by five or more uh, of the uh, acrobatics check means it falls. So, everybody give me a reflex save here. Oh dear. Fail, fail, fail. I failed. failed. Check. Oh, you failed? I failed. Ooh. I failed, I failed badly, too. Eight. Oof. Bad news. What no, about you? Five. Aldo. Five. You, you rolled a five? I total? rolled a five. Okay. What about you, uh, Aldo? Uh, oh, I took. Oh no, you're fine, Aldo. Yeah. I'm sorry. I meant Atticus. A uh, seven. <laughs> Jeepers. Halster. Sixteen. Okay. Uh, I think you're gonna be all right. Let me just make absolutely sure. Gre wait, 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 wait. This seven. is impossible, right? Greece is a ten foot square. There can't be three of us in a straight line uh, in Greece. One object or ten foot square. All right. I will cast it on the uh, Sir Julie and Halster portion of the room. Halster is fine, uh, but Sir Julie slips and falls down the stairs. It's <laughs> convenient <laughs> that you got to make that decision after we rolled. I, I will think, focus it on the ones that failed the save. I think, given that you cheated, we should all re-roll. I think you're going to take four points of damage for falling down the stairs like an idiot. <laughs> That seems like the opposite of what I want. <laughs> <laughs> boom, 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 boom. And you all just move out of the way and let her slide down. <laughs> and Sean looks down and takes notes. <laughs> it is now Sir Julie's turn. Prone on the floor, covered in grease, looking the fool. Was that four points of damage real, or were you just... Yeah, you mean? fell down the stairs. If I threw you down the stairs right now, it would hurt. I kind of want to throw you down the stairs. I'm not wearing armor. That's true. Uh, four points of damage. <laughs> Did you see this grease? I'll stand up. I mean, look at this grease. And then... <laughs> <laughs> that grease looks slippery. It does. <laughs> oh, no. You know what? It's his failure means it can't move that round. 
So do I just stay on the no, ground? No, 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 no. I think in, this is a unique situation because you fell out of the grease as part of the spell. Yeah, you're All fine. Right. So you're not in the grease. I will stand up and walk back straight through the grease. Okay, I'm going to need an acrobatics check, and if uh, it's DC 10, and you can move half speed. If you fail, you fall back down the stairs, <laughs> which amazing. would be That's hilarious. As soon as you cast it, I was like, this, this is, is amazing. <laughs> yeah. This is potentially quite comical. This is yeah. potentially <laughs> the best strategy against Sir Julie ever. <laughs> and Sean is just standing there. <laughs> she falls again. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Take another three points of damage. Whoop. I was only on the first step. No, you had to get back up to where Halster was, and then you would tumble down. What a fool. You lay at the bottom of the stairs, covered in blood. It is now Atticus's turn. Uh, Atticus has Halster in front of him, an open space of grease on the stairs, and then Aldo at the top. He looks up at Aldo, past the grease. Aldo, it is all but impassable. Good luck. <laughs> and he delays. <laughs> You've got the stone. It's all you need. It's all right, my friend. I understand that you can't think of a way to come up here and help me. Believe me, I was once where you are, my friend. <laughs> it is Halster's turn. Halster, you're in the same predicament here. You've got to use acrobatics. Oh. DC 10, or you're going to fall yeah, and land on top of Sir Julie. Luckily, she will break your fall and take the D6 damage. <laughs> I have a negative four to acrobatics. That's what I got. Wow. So negative good. four, buddies. Um, it's a good spell to cast. Do I have line of sight? Can I stand where I am without risk of falling right now? Uh, you need to move at least to the top step where Sir Julie was when she first caught sight of this creature. All right, I'm going to attempt to move into that square to get line of sight in order to cast an ability on this creature. Hey, you creature. could roll really high. Um, that's a negative one. <laughs> You fall down the stairs, and Sir Julie takes two points of damage. <laughs> oh, wait, I moved Tammy. Uh, all right, so you fall down, land right on uh, Sir Julie. So now Sean is standing there, wondering what the hell to do, as both Sir Julie and Halster are prone at the bottom of the steps. Uh, Atticus has delayed, and Sean looks at you like... What do I do? Clean off the grease. All right. And so Sean steps up, and then he falls down the stairs. <laughs> and you take six points of damage. <laughs> His little golf pencil goes right into your cheek. So now Aldo is alone. <laughs> With just a speck down at Atticus. Atticus is just like... <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> it's a new round. It's Aldo's turn. Aldo, you look down the stairs and you just see Sean on top of a Halster on top of Sir Julie. And Atticus smiling at you. <laughs> Gonna throw another bomb. <laughs> <laughs> That is a 28 against touch. Jeepers! Got him! That is a hit. It's a it's a one-on-one -on -one fight. Yeah. yeah. He tosses it on her, he like rolls it along the ground and like explodes against its feet uh, for 15 more points of fire damage. Oh phenomenal. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's its turn. And it doesn't like your whole bomb-throwing shenanigans. So its hand starts glowing with electricity, and he steps up with you to you and casts Shocking Grasp. Whoa! So this is going to be a melee touch attack. He cast it before he steps, so it won't provoke. Here we go. Against Touch AC, that's a 16. That's a hit. 
Yikes, this is going to be 5d6 damage. Holy shit. Whoa, sixes for everybody. 12 plus 5, 17, 21, 22 points of electricity damage. Oh, just like Raiden's fatality in the original Mortal Kombat. And the grease electrifies as well. Um, bad situation here. Aldo has done significant damage, but he is alone, and that grease is just gonna hang out there. I also this... have three hit points left. Three? Yeah, because I was never fully healed from before. You took the healing from my last channel, right? Uh, oh, no, I didn't. It was, I believe, nine. Nine. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? Audience bottle cap. <laughs> yeah! Um, now I only have two <laughs> left. For the record, he didn't reach the front row. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, give it a little more umph. Um, do you want to act, seeing this situation? Is it my turn? No. But you didn't act in the first round. Um, he's like, Aldo, get out of there! I basically, I can't do anything with Aldo in that space. Is my, that's my hang-up right now. Uh, do I have line of sight on the creature that it moved there from this? I'm like three spots down the stairs. Uh, I'd say if you got on that first grease spot, you could see him. You'd get a real good view if you got right on Tammy's head. Right. He's not going to do it right now because he doesn't know that if he steps on that space, he'll see the creature again. So. It's really tough because where Aldo is positioned, it doesn't have any clear space for y'all to get up without moving through the grease or like staying on the grease. Yeah. So you just want to stand there and watch him die because you've got a pretty good view of it. Uh, well, I will I say it is Sir Julie's I just said, turn. I just said get out of there. I'm saying get out of there. And if you withdraw, you can get out of there. You know, like you can definitely get out of there okay. without provoking. All right, so you say that to the much more intelligent Aldo who could devise a plan on his own. Does, Al does Al Aldo go before the creature? Yes, right? Uh, yes. It is Sir Julie's turn, though. So. Sir Julie will, d will stand up uh -huh. and ready in action. Okay. Once Aldo gets out of the way, she'll charge up the stairs. Oh, that's going to be fun. Yes, it will. Uh, it you know now, what? It now comes back to Atticus's actual turn. Uh, he'll delay. Okay, just checking the duration of Grease. It is minutes per level. So oh, yeah. Will, it's here the whole time, buddy. This will last for You ever try to get Grease out of, like, some fabric? Just, take, just clings. Oh, it's, man, this is bad. Uh, it is Halster's turn. Um, Prone on top of Sir Julie with Sean on top of you. Sir Julie is standing up. On top of Sir Julie's feet. There we go. Halster's going to stand and ready a spell. So I should be able to cast... Uh, Cure moderate as normal, and the trigger is Aldo getting within my range. Okay. Very good, very good. Perfect. It is Aldo's turn. Uh, Aldo is going to wave bye bye to the scum and like jump up and slide feet first down the stairs, down the grease stairs. <laughs> so awesome. If you succeed on the acrobatics check, I'll say that you don't fall. You just make it look really cool. Uh, 14. 14, yeah. So you just slide like a, like you're sliding into second base, like a pop-up slide. Badass. All right, so you go to the bottom of the stairs next to Atticus. That activates my action. Yes. Actually, I think it activates. At first, it would activate Halster's... Uh, well, you can have Aldo move further down if you want. Um, I'd have him stop by me, probably. Yeah, I have him next to you. You just can't see it because the room's okay. too small. You're uh, on another map, basically. So it's going to heal 50% more of this. I'm using my final blessing of the day, and I rolled max fucking healing. Nice! Nice! Oh, he needs it. Huge. 31 points of healing. Oh. That's what best friends are for. I can't wait for the email that explains why that was wrong. <laughs> Sir Julie, he's looking at it. Sir Julie 
What is your activated thing? You're going to charge up I the greasy charge stairs? charge up, up the greasy stairs. All right. Flavor charge. Come Flavor on. charge. Flavor charge. Flavor charge. Just make a DC 10 acrobatics check. Yeah! Sir <laughs> Julie, no! Why don't Fought we... demons in the world wound. <laughs> stymied by a flight of stairs. <laughs> We should just, now, I think we should just let him come to us. Exactly. You take three points of damage and land prone. <laughs> Honestly, I've now taken more damage from these stairs than I took from that, <laughs> that monster down in the basement. The ghost. It is now the creature's no. turn. Atticus will go. <laughs> what are the, what's the CR for these stairs? <laughs> <laughs> Those are CR6, that's a CR6 Tammy. As soon as Aldo slid by and vacated the space, he begins his casting, and it has this, you know, dramatic flair to it, like he used to do on stage. And he's just like, oh, but what is suddenly over there? And running up the stairs successfully, va- um, uh, jaunting over the grease like it's nothing, mm. is Sir Julie running up and standing right in front of the creature, ready to fight. He casts an illusory image of Sir Julie nice. right in front of the creature, a silent image. Okay. And so. then she rears back her sword to swing at him. All right. Interesting. Interesting. I wonder if the creature knows about action economy. Yeah, I was just going to say, but it was a double move. That's why she can't swing now. He would know that. Didn't she just fall down the stairs? What was her standard? He didn't he see. Says to himself. Uh, all right, he is going to attempt to, uh, well, shit. He's going to try to bite Dis- Sir Julie. Bite Sir Julie. So what is it, a will save to disbelieve it now that he's attempting to interact with it? Um, no. He, ha- he has to do a, an attack roll. Uh, yeah, he has to do an attack roll. Okay. And if I hit, then it... Actually, it's a I little bit, it's, it's kind of up to you. Yeah, I think it's Because a it does say you can move the image like, oh, you know what, if you fail the will save, I'll move like I you right. miss the attack. Yeah, we did this in uh, That's right. Giant yeah. Slayer with the... Okay, the chains, so will save. Them. Will save, all right. To disbelieve the illusion. I rolled an 11. Yes! Yeah! All right, so he goes to bite and she dodges out of the way like a tr- the trained warrior she is. And I just love it, Atticus is below this, just like yeah, a that's puppet so cool. master. That's Just so like. David Copperfield. It's so awesome. <laughs> I love that. Uh, all right, and then he's going to go to Claw. So I rolled another will save. Uh, I think it's one per round. He's got three attacks. <laughs> yeah, but I think that that will save represents whatever. The whole round of him attacking. So I mean, he goes it doesn't to... say each attack provokes the save. Right, right. right. Well, for me, I'm, I'm wasting the whole round doing it. You know what I mean? So, like, I attack once, I go to attack again, and I hit you. But then I realize that it's a, a, a uh, illusion. Illusion, yeah. Illusion, Dad. You don't have time <laughs> in my illusion. Do you it's keep illusion. it there? What's that? Do you keep it there, or once it knows, do you get it out of there? Um, yeah, I mean, he can, he can keep it there. I'm just, uh, I'm just curious why, like, it, you failed the save. Right, but I then attacked it again, so I interacted with it with again, so I roll a fresh save. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. I just don't think that's how it works. Yeah, no one knows. So, uh, but if he but you slices it, through it and like clearly knows it's not there, he'll let it sort of vanish. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you wasted its turn, which is yeah. He which wasted is around. Huge. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's it then. Okay, then it is uh, Sir. No, uh, Sir Julie, you acted. Uh, so it is Atticus's. Well, no, it was Atticus's turn. Everybody moved in the initiative here, so it goes back to Aldo. Well. <laughs> I'm going to delay. <laughs> yeah! Okay. See, that orb really is teaching you how to play. <laughs> it is now Halster's turn. Uh, Halster can't get up those stairs either, but rather than just delay in what is probably a very narrow battlefield anyway, he's going to cast Defending Bone on himself, which he meant to do before going up there. So he's surrounded by a swirling shield of bones, and he's going to go headfirst into battle when this awful scum comes down the stairs. Okay. Uh, Sir Julie. 
So Julie is going to delay. She'll wait down here. Thrilling. She'll, the... And she'll, she will uh, taunt the scum. Okay. I what don't care for your family's music. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. It's quite loud and discordant. That is just rude. Your manager, Reuben Kincaid, has shortchanged several venues. Those Partridge Family references always kill. They, one fucking time, someone's gonna understand these references. <laughs> I much prefer Susan Day's work on L.A. Law. I are you see, visible, Atticus? <laughs> I gave you, I tried to throw you a bone there, Skip. <laughs> Atticus, are you visible now? Yes. All right, the creature will step to the top of the stairs and wait, throw. Wait wait. wait, 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 it needs to be my turn. Do you act now? Did you move in the initiative as well? Yeah, because remember, okay. I just went right before him. All right. Go ahead. You're gonna, just going to delay anyways. Uh, I will... I will ready an action. Okay. My action is going to be uh, if I see him and he begins casting a spell. Okay. Well, that's going to trigger because he steps up and begins casting a spell. I cast a spell. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. To interrupt his casting a spell. Okay. Uh, and he's going to grab, reach within the flesh of this creature, grab his bones, and rattle them inside and yes. break them to pieces! Yes! He casts Bone Shaker on the creature. Yes! <laughs> Any type of save? Fortitude? Uh, yeah, fortitude save. Okay. Uh, ooh, went from a natural 20 to a natural 2. Yes! yes. Oh my God, I never thought he'd actually do it. Uh, oh my God, phenomenal, phenomenal. Uh, okay, you're gonna take six, six, five on the first 3D6. Whoa. Holy shit. Can't even do that math right now, I'm so excited. Uh, that is 24 points of damage. Oh! As his skeleton is rattled within him. Well, that changes everything. Wait, is this a spell that allows you to move them? Uh, if they're undead, I can move them. Oh, wait, let me see if it works for regular creatures. Uh, yes, yes. Move them uh, perhaps onto I, the grease? And I move yes. them toward me. I pull, because I can move them five feet. And I pull his skeleton toward me. Thank you for reminding me. Wait, you pull him towards you? Oh no, and he, he goes right on the grease? <laughs> So I got to roll a reflex. I love thing. this, dude. Atticus just like grabbing <laughs> so his skeleton and drawing. It's fucking Vader, dude. This yeah, it is totally so is. badass. It's force choke. He makes the reflex save. Oh. So he's just standing 22. there now. 10 he's feet from Atticus. Standing 10, 10 feet from Atticus on top of Greasy Tammy. He was going to cast one spell, but now that you've done this, it's changed everything. No, no, no. Now that I've done this, he has to roll... Did you interrupt the spell 34 uh, right. concentration check to, ma to not lose the spell? I tried, to, I tried to get away with that, but you're right. Okay. Uh, okay, shit. Here we go. Uh, fail. Yes. You didn't get a DC 34? <laughs> it was the God. perfect use of that spell. Dude, I love yeah, caster awesome. on caster, man. Wow, that really changes everything. Okay, well, uh, it is standing on the grease. It didn't fall, but you just effed it up with Bone Shaker, and now it, it lost its turn again. So you've made it lose two turns, effectively. Uh, can, Sir, can Sir Julie act? Sir Julie may act, yes. I'll stand up. Here we go. And try to step onto this step. <laughs> <laughs> if I can roll above, I'd be happy if I rolled above a 10. I'd still fail but I would be really happy. Want to use the bottle cap? No. Come on. No, no, no. Yeah! <laughs> so Julie falls back down the stairs. <laughs> you, take, you take five points of damage. Oh my God. Okay, swift action lay on hands. <laughs> Sean, Sean left. After the fifth time that you fell down the stairs, he's just like, I'm out of here. Um, it is a new round. And it is Aldo's turn. Uh, Aldo, can, can I see him now from? 
Uh, yeah, he's standing right at the top of the grease. Even though you can't see yourself on oh, the map, shit. you do. Okay. You can see him. Uh, who else is standing in grease right now? Uh, just just the creature. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is going to be bad. All right. I'm actually out of candy, but I'm going to throw one final bomb. Uh, that is a 16 against Touch AC. Yeah, that hit. Okay. Yes! 17 points of damage, and the grease catches fire. Oh! <laughs> so here's what happens. Yes! You hit it. You kill him. Oh, yeah, baby! And then he falls down the stairs, lands on Sir Julie, and she takes two points of damage. <laughs> Is wow. any of that mechanical? Uh, no, that was all actual damage. <laughs> mechanical cuts right through your DR. <laughs> all right. That was awesome. You're awesome. Creature You're awesome. is You're awesome. dead Zony. Awesome. Whew. Oh, I almost had you there. I had you on the ropes. Take that knight out of the fight. I have a chance. I what do you want to do? I have a question. Yeah. Has it been taken below its con? Why do you ask? fire, wasn't it? Oh, no, it slipped down the stairs. Why do you ask? It doesn't... You have no reason Let's to think it Let's stabilize it and question them. Find out oh. who sent them here. Can you wake it up? How, How much damage did you do there? Uh, 16? 17? 17. Um, yeah. You could if you wanted to. Question it. We might be able to bring it back. We bind it. We bind it. Bind it. Stabilize it. Yes. We need to know what they're doing here. Who told them of this place? They didn't stumble upon this sick rehearsal space. Someone told them about it. Will you bind its arms, Sir Julie? I shall. Stabilize. All right. You stabilize the creature. You strip it of its gear, I'm assuming? Yes. Oh, yes. It didn't have any armor, but it did have a masterwork trident. It did have two potions of cure moderate oh, wounds. Nice. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Sweet. And it does have a magical headband. <gasps> yes! Get the fuck out of here! Smoke ref! Smoke ref! Smoke ref! <laughs> Unless it's, a, unless it's a sorcerer, in which case it's... Shut a... up, Matthew! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is it a sorcerer? Is it goddamn Lori Charisma bullshit? Uh, that is a 21? 21. I assist. It is a headband of alluring charisma. No! <laughs> <laughs> alluring charisma plus two. <laughs> no one benefits from that. We need to find a traitor. A traitor. I oh. shall roll for this headband. I'll roll for it too. Might as well. <laughs> uh, do you want the headband? I'll pass. Really? Yeah, I, I'm turning a new leaf with this mustache. Okay. I'd rather you roll for it and shave the mustache. <laughs> what are you going to do with it? I'm going to wear it. <laughs> the mustache or the headband? <laughs> Maybe the effect of the headband is that it gives you a mustache. Yeah. Oh. And that is what's so alluring. I would pay $10,000 for that. <laughs> headband of alluring mustache. That's how the charisma manifests, is a, a spontaneous mustache. It gives you a classic Tom Selleck handlebar. Yeah. All right, roll, roll for it. How, sir, do you, have, do you have anything mechanical in your class that uses charisma? He must not. He must not. You don't either, right? What? There's nothing mechanical in your class besides diplomacy checks that would use... Right. All right let's and roll intimidate for it. checks. Let's roll for it. I just did. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's really high. 17. <gasps> I roll the 17. Oh! Oh! It's, a, it's a true roll-off. Here we go. Let's dance. Let's take some bets here. Same time, man. I don't know you. Three, one. Oh! Yeah! 
You earned that, Joe. And now Atticus has a mustache. It's yeah. canon. Yeah. <laughs> this mustache comes off of his touch. That mustache music? Yeah, that's, that's the mustache theme. Music to mustache. Was that, was that Dan the Butcher? What's his yeah, name? Dan, Dan the Butcher Hill. of Toronto. The Butcher of Toronto. That's his theme. Dan the Butcher Hill. That's uh, right. Dan the Butcher Hill. You know what? I think Dan Hill has a mustache. Does he really? Oh, and a beard. He does now. All right, so you got a, a useless headband uh, yeah. for a wizard. Um, let's talk about this room. Everything in here is in disarray. There's overturned uh, and broken furniture littering the floor. Um, there's sprays of dry blood marks uh, on the stone walls. And a... Uh, you're reading the right room. Well, well more importantly, yeah. we want to bring this guy back to consciousness. Yeah, but let me tell you the flavor text, and then you can okay. do your stupid thing. I There's a cracked mirror <laughs> hanging on the eastern wall as well, uh, right at the top of the stairs. It looks like it used to be a nice room for lodging. Maybe it was the magistrate's bedroom. Who knows? Um, or the cook, since it's right above the kitchen. Maybe it was the steward's apartment. But now it's a disaster. There's a uh, portrait of an aging couple lying amid bloodied and torn bedclothes near a large double bed. Mm. The room's Wait. wardrobe stands open, its mirror cracked, and its contents spilled out in front of its mahogany doors. What do you do? The portrait is of an aging couple? Yes. Dead? No, they're just aging. Who draws a portrait of dead people? <laughs> yeah. That's why I was confused. Yeah. <laughs> I said aging. Yes, but then, then you said they were, like, lying bloody in a in No, bed. they're lying amongst bloody bedclothes. So, yeah, Atticus will turn to uh, Aldo now with his refined mustache, <laughs> looking a little more scholarly. He says, you said suddenly you were overwhelmed with the knowledge of the history of Galarian, were you not? Yes, ask me anything. Bring me to your next trivia night. This... He looks up at the painting. This couple is this Laos the third and oh. the wife. Let me scan my newfound memories. Uh, 18. Is it Laos and his wife? Look, Laos the third, whatever. The one, the, the wife and the, di the death, the disease, the poisoning. Who is it? Who you the fuck is it? You don't know. Damn. There's no name. All right. Okay. Man and wife dead, or soon to be dead. Man and wife, say man and wife. <laughs> He's good at what he does. So what do you do? Wake him up. Gonna wake him up? Okay. Let's find out what they're doing here. He wakes up. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need Shom. He speaks Aquan. That's true. It's canon. Uh, yes, Sir Julie, I can translate for you. <laughs> Sean, tell him. <laughs> I forgot about Sean. Awkward scholar, Sean. I forgot about Sean. Tell him we'll let him live if he tells us why he came to this place. All right. Who sent him? Alubabru. Galarum. Oh, Sean. Umabru. With vigor. <laughs> Don't appear fearful. You must project confidence. Atticus takes a note. <laughs> the creature looks at Sean and says, What? What did he say, Sean? <laughs> he, he's quite upset. <laughs> Said something to the effect of, he'll never talk to you, coppers. Sean, this will be your first great test. I'm ready, Sir Julie. You must convince him to talk to us. 
Use all of your intimidation and diplomacy skills. Sean straightens his silk blouse. <laughs> it's urine stained silk blouse. It's urine stained silk blouse. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sean says. <laughs> Creature looks at Sean. <laughs> Seems like he's coming around, Sean. Yes, yes no, hold. Oh my. It seems he and his kind were recruited by someone named Melisen <gasps> to come here and bring their scum soldiers to take over the fort. They came through the aqueduct system, as you knew. They're working for her. They're in cahoots. And they were the ones behind the clearing out of the fort. Did they make the juju zombies? Is this one capable of it? I'll ask, looking at the caster. Olamlum <laughs> juju. <laughs> he says, I don't know nothing about no juju. <laughs> I don't know how to make no juju. Evidently not. Where is Melisen? Ask him. Ask him. Melisen. And you know what he said. Filthy liar. He says he doesn't know where she is. He says he doesn't know anything. No, he is. doesn't know. He doesn't know. They were paid handsomely. But he, uh, he, he's sad that he has failed in his mission. But he's happy that you have allowed to let him live and would now know, like to know if he can leave. No, no, no. Certainly not. He said, but we made a deal. No, of course. Uh, what, I, I said what that did I you would say to him, Sean? What's that? What did you say to him? What did you offer? I, I just said what you said, that you would let he, him live. And if of you... course, my intention is not to kill him. What I need to know is he's lost his employer. He no longer has this opportunity. Perhaps he'd be willing to take another. Perhaps we could add yet another NPC to this party. We have, tell him we have found quite a few valuables left behind by Melisen and her friends. We'd be happy to share the treasure with him if he'd join us. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, t I'll ask him. Uh, he says, <laughs> Sean says he, he, he would never. It would be a disgrace to his people if he was ever caught working with the likes of a land breathers like you. Well, that was just rude. I agree. Throw him in the dungeon, then. Yes. We said we'd let him live. We didn't say we'd let him go free. Who knows what dangers he could pose, set back out into the world. 
So, Julie, I leave it to you. You are, after all, the fairest among us. Should he be jailed, or should we let him go free? He shall be jailed until the justice system in this town is restored, and they may try him as they see fit. Tell him, Sean, you're going to prison. You'll be tried fairly when the time is right. Until then, you will get no food or water, <laughs> no sunlight, and will not be allowed to walk for several weeks. Sir Julie, look, Sir Julie listens to you say this and says, I am a paragon of goodness. That's what you meant, right? I'll leave the room. <laughs> I, I hope to one day be a knight like Sir Julie. I don't feel comfortable with this, so you'll have to tell him. I think I've picked up some of it. I have rather high score in linguistics. He stretches. The creature yells back to Sean. Sean says he, he didn't understand a word of that. <laughs> It was all gibberish. <laughs> and I did my best. Anyway, you have him now. Uh, we will escort him to the jail cell downstairs, okay. and we will provide food and water for him. <laughs> you bring him down, you lock him up, you give him food and water. Can Come. we do some healing before we do the, before we do the last room? Heal him? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Here's a quick final channel. Uh, six points of healing for everybody. Umlabu, he says to you. I didn't heal him. He was in the dungeon. <laughs> he excluded him with his... <laughs> <laughs> you took selective channeling as a feat then, did you? <laughs> yes, but it requires the person I'm trying to exclude to be in a dungeon on another floor at the time <laughs> of the channeling. He will waste away in that jail... In the meantime, you come back up to this room. Do you want to do anything in this room? Any searching? Uh, yeah, detect magic uh, on the room. Uh, you don't detect any magic. I want to take that portrait right off the goddamn wall and see if there's a safe behind it. Oh, there is not. Damn. All right, let's move on. East or west? Can I do an appraise to see if it's a worthy piece of art? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I will aid you in that and succeed. Uh, 27. 27. Uh, yeah, you think it might fetch a nice price. Uh, stolen art from the town garrison. <laughs> someone, <laughs> someone would certainly want a piece of that. Uh, so passive aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> A collector would go crazy. <laughs> Did you steal that from the town garrison? Yeah. Did you steal it from the police department? <laughs> you walked into a police department <laughs> and stole art from the chief's office. Let's go east. East. Okay, how are you approaching this? Just banging the door open? We'll listen at the door. All right. 21. 21, you hear. Is it someone shushing somebody else? No. It sounds like footsteps dragging against stone in a slow and deliberate pace. I kick open the door. Woof. Kick open the door to reveal the battlements. It's wide open here. Wide open spaces. Room you see main. stairs to the north leading to the dungeon. You see uh, that it sweeps all around. You see the tower doors to the second level of the tower. Uh, and it just keeps stretching all around. I'll give you a quick, sloppy reveal of some of this. You bust that door open, and you hear, uh, uh, 
and something seems to be mo moving towards you. What do you do? Uh, Sir Julius steps out into a defensive position and grips her greatsword. Ready yourselves. Something approaches. Okay. What does Halster do? Um, Halster will cast a spell on himself preemptively. Divine favor. Divine favor. Do you step out? I do. Okay. Halster steps out. What does Aldo do? Uh, Aldo steps up. Oh, I guess he can't get to Sir Julie. Okay. He is going to drink an extract casting shield on himself. Ah, a little buff for the fight that may occur. What does Atticus do? After that last fight, Atticus is utterly exhausted. He stands in the back, looking across. Here's this shuffling, suspects zombies. You guys walk out in there and seem to be ready for battle. He stands behind and just stares at the iron stone whipping around Aldo's head. He levels his gaze and delays his action. It's a bold move. A bold move indeed. Well, whipping around the corner to Halster and Julie, you do see one of those juju zombies starting to come right at you. From behind, you hear another one is coming to reach you from the north. And then to the right of Halster, Roll a perception check, both of you. Twelve. Natural one. Oh no, Halster, no! Four. As you step out there, one juju zombie comes from the south, one comes from the north, and directly next to you, neither of you see another id ooze appear. No! You have to be shitting me! And reach out! You have out. to be shitting me now! And we'll see you tomorrow night. No! Oh my god! Oh, You're gonna have to come oh see it! God. Everybody come back! We'll be come here! Come back! Come back tomorrow! You guys are the best!